Alrighty, welcome back to the Doom 3 commentary with me, Skelly the Metalhead. Today we are going to be continuing our backlogging adventures through uh, the recycling plant. Today, well, we're gonna find out who the main villain is, even though I spoiled it last part. yippee ki -yay, it's gonna be fun on the bun. Now, uh, in terms of introductions here, we, uh, we are introduced to two new enemies, actually. One of which, uh, for better or for worse, is rather annoying. Who it is, and, uh, well... What we're gonna face, I'll explain later. I'll explain later. But for now, let's get a little message from Doctor Petruga. Making progress, are we? And in such a hurry to find us, to find me. There's no need to rush. I am everywhere, and everything here is mine. We thank you for alerting the fleet, for warning them. You're such a fool. They're racing here, racing to us, and we are waiting. Waiting for them to fall into their worst nightmare. They will join my legion, and with their ships, I will bring this hell to Earth. You won't live to see it, and you will die long before you have a chance to warn them. So yeah, the gist of that message was that was pretty much saying, Hey dumb fuck, thank you for alerting the Earth's fleet. Now we're gonna conquer hell with demons, brew ha 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 ha, etc, etc. Although, alternatively, if you decide not to send the transmission and, well, end up following Council of Swan's orders, basically what ends up happening is Petruga goes, Well, at least you did the smart thing in not alerting the fleet, but uh, apparently because demons are skilled in technology, we're pretty much gonna summon the fleet anyway, so that decision was entirely pointless. I don't know, which is why I honestly think that the mechanic probably could have had something interesting done with it. Like, I mean, if you summon them earlier, you still get soldiers, you know, you have a little bits and pieces of backup here and there, but at the same time, you'd have more enemies to face. You know, because whether they've been converted into demons, which is something we'll see later, or if we're just ha dealing with more, you know, z -Sec security soldiers, you know, it'd make for an interesting mechanic to make for a pseudo-hard mode. I don't know. A missed opportunity, and something I think would have really given the whole choice of, you know, summoning the fleet versus, you know, dealing with a threat yourself, would have given a little bit of credence, I'd say. As your lungs fill with toxic gases. Oh yeah, and the trigger also decides to taunt you throughout the level. Uh, which he'd already kind of been doing up to this point, though it was mostly just with evil. <laughs> Lost and everything. But now he actively taunts you which will become a little bit more apparent throughout the game, and yeah, actually, it's kind of creepy. Now, also a sad bit of fact about real life, actually, uh, the voiceover artist who actually played Dr. Petruga, yeah, he passed away in 2007, sadly. He had a very fitting voice for the character, though. Anyway, Lost Souls, we haven't seen them in a while. I haven't seen them since Alpha Labs, I think. And... Again, I say it was so long ago, but it was probably like one or two parts. But especially considering that uh, I recorded these in sep- uh, Shit, I think it was actually August when I recorded it. My goodness, time flies. And now I'm recording this in October when I'm going to be uploading the parts that I recorded in August. Ah, uh, scheduling. It's fun. Well then again, I mostly s I mostly space these parts for like a week in between them. Although I think the difference is, like, for what I was doing recently was that I was- they're splitting them like two weeks apart, if then because, you know, busy and shit. Uh, that and I think things should probably be settling back, although things will probably be back to normal by the time this gets uploaded anyway, so what does it matter? Like, I think I had like a three week break in between, in between uploading part five and then uh, providing some time between in which I uploaded a Strangeland review. I don't know, kinda weird, but hopefully I should get I should hopefully get the rest of Doom 3 done either by uh, January of 2017, or at the very least, and again I can only hope for the end of the year, hopefully. I don't know. Kinda wanna move on to Assassin's Creed, because, again, while I, while admittedly I am a little bit burned out about that game since I did like a 50 minute review of it, and that took a very long time to, you know, put out and shit, I do hope that eventually... Or at least at some stage that I'll be able to cover that game, you know, completely fresh-faced and ready for some hardcore Altair action. But of course, 
Uh, the enemy variety in this area actually is quite diverse, because like, not only with the two new enemies that we'll be, we'll be encountering later, but again, we also have a healthy mix of Kakro Demons, uh, Revenants, which are called Reverence in the previous part for some reason. And uh, yeah, we also got regular Imps, Soldiers, it's all good, quite varietized. Which is one of the things I can actually praise the Doom series for, as with its en enemy variety. Oh, excuse me, just had noodles, and it was yummy. Of course I say that, but there are still monster causes just to, you know, pack things up to the rafters, but, you know, enemy variety is one of Doom's strong suits. Again, not all of them will be memorable, like, I mean, I think the biggest example of that would probably be with the Imps versus the Archvile, uh, despite the threat of them. But still, it's nice to see that Doom has a nice, not necessarily colorful cast, but a diverse cast nonetheless. Yeah, and as you can tell by the, uh, you know, green gases everywhere, nobody farted, but yeah, there's going to be some poison-related puzzles, particularly towards the end of this, because, yeah. As you can, well, that's one example of it. Uh, but there's another puzzle which is actually quite dangerous and can make this level pretty hard depending upon uh, what difficulty you're playing as, because, yeah, playing this on uh, veteran mode, I believe is the hardest, or it might be... Extreme or something, yeah, things can get pretty intense. And not just because of the enemies, but mostly because of the puzzles that you have to solve. And it's not really even a puzzle in the traditional sense, again, it's mostly just pushing buttons. But I'd say a puzzle more so in figuring out what you need to do, because when I first played the certain puzzle section at the end of this part, yeah, I didn't really have a lot of wits about me, and I fucked up. Several times, in fact. But for the time being, I believe it is somewhere nearby here. I think it might be another later section I'm thinking of. Because I know for a fact that it's definitely after the section where we clear out the tunnel with the poison gases in it, which you probably saw earlier. But yeah. And I'm running out of tr things to say. Yeah, another fat zombie. Well, that was taken out relatively easily. <laughs> uh, then again, I guess it also goes to show the effective power of the shotgun, which... And again, another weapon I think I forgot to mention last time was also the uh, rocket launcher. Or if I did, I'm not too sure, so I apologize if I'm repeating commentary here, but... Uh, yeah, the rocket launcher is mostly used for dealing with... Uh, a certain enemy that you might have got a little bit of foreshadowing to with the... Uh, abdomen and the vagary. But yeah, that's usually that's a pretty effective weapon. But again, it is the missile weapon of the game, so that's kind of obvious. But nonetheless, you know, it's not quite as applicable as you might think to a lot of other situations. Because again, you know, much like with the trites, there are also smaller enemies which can... And especially with how fast they move in some cases, it's quite... ...difficult to, you know, shift it around. Ugh, those damn lost souls on a stroll. It's really weird, because, like, I mean, you'd think that the Lost Souls would often take different forms, especially considering Classic Doom, but they always seem to take the head of the uh, woman that was killed in the Alpha Labs, which is quite strange, but that being said, I do kind of like the uh, more stripped-down design compared to the Classic variant. Like, I mean, the Classic Lost Soul had a very heavy metal vibe to it, but I don't know. kind of enjoy the Doom 3 interpretation, to be honest. And there we go. Fresh, clean area with no poisony gas. I should also add that there are no- I don't- and in this part I don't think there are any PDAs, so that means I actually have to do my job and provide intriguing commentary. I suppose with the lack of anything else to talk about, I should also probably cover a little bit more about what Dr. Petruga was doing, you know, pre-all of this happening, which, again, goes into the whole teleportation experiments and yeah, he... and again, I'm not sure if this is covered later on, but it's stated in the game that he... Uh, again, because Dr. C because Cancelos Swan was so restrictive on his research, uh, he himself used the teleporter for the first time, and because of that, yeah, a little something happened which may or, not, may or may not have involved hell. And this is the most annoying enemy in the entire fucking game. 
These little baby creatures with wings are known as cherubs. Uh, cherubs, I believe, like, I mean, in terms of their etymology, are actually related to angels. Again, I haven't done the research in a while. But again, I do believe it has something to do with, you know, innocence or childlike features, as demonstrated here. And, uh... Yeah, I don't really know much more than that, so I'll probably have to do a little bit more research later if there's an absence of anything for me to talk about. But in regards to Doom 3, they are still the most annoying enemy in the game for reasons... which again is kind of obvious. Again, they're very small in size, similar to the trites. Uh, they have wings, which gives them excessive maneuverability, which means that, you know... Unless, of course, you're using something like a grenade or, you know, the rocket launcher... Excuse me. You're not going to be able to hit them very quickly. And, again, something... And, again, you know, I might have made them look, you know, easy as piss just then. But I want you to keep in mind that if you're going up against them, you got to be quick, and if you don't take them out, they will fuck your shit up. As demonstrated later in the part when we are fighting another certain large enemy that was seen in the abdomen of the vagary. I mean, a cherubs, cherubs for me kind of feel a little bit similar to the Slopers from Silent Hill 3 in the sense that, you know, as enemies they are kind of creepy. But at the same time, it gets to a point where you've faced them so many times that you, instead of going, Oh no, not this enemy, it gets to a point where you go, Oh no, not this enemy. You know, with a tired drone in your voice. Again, you just get sick of dealing with them and they become more annoying than they are scary. But nevertheless, in and of themselves, the enemies are still kind of chilling, especially since they use childlike features. Though then again, I suppose that's kind of the divide between, you know, seeing kids and then you actually having to kill them in video games, which is a subject in and of itself that I probably shouldn't go into. God, it's a mancubus. <laughs> yeah, insert the internet troll joke here. Fat people's in the basement. Okay, but being serious here, this is the mancubus. Which, again, as you can probably tell by the Cthulhu like design on the tentacles on the front of its mouth, yeah, that was the thing growing out of the arse of the vagary. <laughs> and again, uh, again, I, like, I quite like the design of the mancubus. Like, again, it's a. And I honestly think they probably should have done a little bit more in terms of, you know, its flesh-based origins, because, you know, for as cool as the cannons are, and again, as much of a, you know, punch that they pack, I would have liked to have seen, you know, a little bit more done with it, just to make it seem a little bit more disgusting, and act as a general way to unsettle the viewer. I mean, especially considering that the first scene it appeared in with the, uh, vagary as was, uh, giving birth to it, question mark? Yeah, you know... It's something that I feel really could have done to emphasize the horror and just general eeriness of the creature. However, in terms of strategy, uh, yeah, rocket launcher. Again, it's a very big target, so you should not miss unless, of course, you're a complete idiot. Then again, if you have experience bull bullseyeing Womprats on your T-16 back home, you should be relatively fine with this. Uh, again, as is obvious by the fact that it packs, you know, plasma bolts, Try to avoid its uh, shots because, again, it does pack a serious punch and it will hurt like a bitch. And here come the cherubs again. These most and Again, just you wait. It will seriously fuck your shit up. Like, again, you think. You can, you can see how quickly they move. And here we go. See? Oh, Jesus Christ. Never fails to make me wince. And look at how much health they took off. That is how dangerous the cherubs are. You gotta be really, really careful, otherwise that's what can happen. They're deceptively powerful though, which is honestly my... Christ. That's my biggest criticism with the bloody cherubs. Again, they're so deceptively quick and also so deceptively strong. Oh my god, Doom guy's poor solar plexus, it's bleeding. You saw how much health it took off, like my health was not only in the red, but... Like, the icon itself was, like, so low, I think it was into the bloody single digits. And that's... and that's why I hate the cherubs, they can... 
they can just mob you like that. And again, they're so small and they can sneak by you so deceptively quick uh, that it's so fucking nerve-wracking to me. And again, that's where the tension and fear comes from, but at the same time it also acts as a very big annoyance, because again, uh, both by, you know, the fact that it's early 2000s, you know, therefore checkpoint system, it just really gets in your nerves. Also, it doesn't help for the fact that they're just often hiding around corners, which again, a lot like the monster closets can get a little bit predictable, but unlike, you know, the zombies, they don't make such a loud noise, like you'll maybe hear like a little screech, but that's about it. And yeah, this is the puzzle that I was talking about earlier. I had no idea what I was supposed to do here, but apparently what you were supposed to do was, well, vent the cycle. Which I didn't know, and I died like a dumbass, and, you know, unlike the previous, you know, space sections where you're out on the planet's surface, you don't have a oxygen meter for that. So yeah, combine that with also the fact that you have to deal with enemies, and yeah, you're not, probably not going to survive this for the first time. Unless, of course, your first experience with Doom 3 is watching this, in which case, uh, you now know what to do, and I have saved you from the embarrassment and torment that I felt when I first played this. All in all, though, I think this part actually went down relatively well. I mean, all things considered. And no, I totally did not have to re-record this last little part, so again, before anything else happens, I am Scully, you keep a new metal, and next time we will be entering the Recycling Plant 2, Electric Boogaloo. See you later.